Oh, I really don't feel well today. But I'm making the video anyway. Welcome to the Soft Skill channel. My name is Sebastian Jung and I welcome you to another Soft Skill talk. The weather is getting rougher, cold season, flu season is upon us. As we know, despite the name cold, it isn't really related to the temperature, but rather to humidity and people crowding in uh, spaces, in rooms and so on. However, it certainly goes along with the change in the weather. And another thing that goes along with it is the phenomenon that colleagues show up at work even though they are sick. They are sitting on their place and sneezing, coughing, slowly dying, even though they should be at home in bed. And this is quite a common phenomenon. In Germany, people state in surveys that they, 50 to 70 percent of people state in surveys that they go to work sick at least sometimes. And uh, several of them, around 30%, do so even against the explicit advice of their doctors. So this is quite a common phenomenon and we will talk a bit about it today. I found a number of <clears throat> interesting and helpful sources, unfortunately most of them in German, but I nonetheless link to them in the video description. First of all, there is a term for this behavior, for going to work even though you are sick, and it is called presenteism. However, this is a bit difficult of a term because it is used in different ways. And there are different lines of research. In Europe, especially in Germany, it has the meaning I just mentioned the conscious decision to go to work even though you are sick and sick leave would be perfectly justified. In the US, however, there is a different understanding in a different line of research because for them um, the question is about productivity. How is productivity impacted by health issues? They distinguish between absenteeism uh, which means people staying at home and presenteeism, which means people uh, being at work but having lowered productivity due to health issues and they try to um, calculate the costs related to it. Uh, how much costs are created for the company due to health problems. And they focus in their research on things like chronic diseases, risk factors, so on long-term issues. Not so much on some uh, colleague show him up, showing up at work even though he has a flu. Um, as you probably know, the healthcare system in the USA uh, works in such a way that um, the companies, companies are heavily involved, they purchase a lot of uh, healthcare offerings, are important customers to the pharmaceutical company, so they are interested in studies about the costs of health issues and of course the pharmaceutical industry is interested in funding such studies, so there is a lot of research in that direction. In this video, I will focus on the German perspective, so on the phenomenon of people showing up at work even though they are sick. And uh, most of the numbers I mention, most of the statistics I mention, also um, refer to Germany. Uh, either way, there are some problems with collecting data and uh, getting conclusive evidence. In both in Europe and in the US, 
um, research is mostly done using surveys. So people are directly asked about they, their behavior, they fill out a questionnaire and from that conclusions are drawn. This leads to somewhat valid results, but there are also some problems in regard to the methods. Not all the questionnaires that are used are conclusively validated, so it's not entirely clear if the questions that are used really turn up valid and conclusive results. There are some difficulties there. Um, one thing I noticed I found a bit strange is um, in a German study that was quite useful to me by some government agency where they compared plenty of studies um, that deal with the subject. They uh, showed some uh, examples of questionnaires. And the important question is usually phrased somewhat like this. During the last 12 months, did you ever go to work even though you were sick to an extent that would have justified sick leave? Now, from my point of view, this should be two questions. Have you been sick in the last 12 months? And then how did you deal with it? Because if people answer no to the first question, this could either mean they were sick and stayed at home, or, or they were not sick at all. There are several problems related to presenteeism, related to going to work even though you are sick. First of all, it can have adverse effects on your health, on your um, uh, health status, health conditions. Mm. Mm. Research hasn't been uh, entirely conclusive in that area yet. What has been established so far is that in the long run, people who go to work even though they are sick, people who practice presenteeism, that they have at least as many days of sick leave as people who just stay at home right from the beginning and um, up to double the amount of sick days. Um, because there is a high risk if they don't stay at home and um, until they get better, that the uh, condition, the illness gets worse and is prolonged and um, chronification might even occur, which means that a temporary illness is turned into a permanent illness. There are also indications that, that for example, the risk of cardiovascular disease can uh, increase if you go to work even though you are sick. Furthermore, uh, there is of course the aspect of costs. Um, how much costs are generated for the company by people who go to work even though they are sick? Again, the costs are somewhere between the same amount as for people who stay at home up to double the amount for people who stay at home. Again, um, we have the problem that in the long run, the amount of sick days is at least the same. And um, if people are at work while they are sick, of course, productivity is lowered, which uh, creates additional costs. Um, aspects that are usually not considered in studies that deal with the costs are um, the risks of errors because people who are at work while they are sick have a reduced productivity, have a reduced performance, are more prone to make mistakes, which can of course uh, generate additional costs. And there even is a higher risk of accidents, which can also have severe consequences. And another aspect that is usually not included 
in studies that deal with costs is the fact that there is a risk of contagion for colleagues. So if someone shows at work sick in the long run, the whole department might end up sick and everybody will end up staying at home, which would of course be way worse than just that single person uh, taking some sick leave. Um, I think this is a situation where you, that clearly shows whether a superior has some integrity and competence because uh, such a leader will certainly send anybody home who shows up at work despite being sick. In Germany at least, superiors even have a duty to do so because the employer has a duty to care for his employees to a certain degree. So, um, for example, the other uh, colleagues who are not sick have to be protected from the risk of contagion and also the employer has to make sure that uh, the one who shows up sick uh, doesn't risk his own health. Um, so there are plenty of problems related to presenteeism, related to showing up at work despite being sick. But as I initially said, a lot of people do it, 50 to 70 percent of survey participants. So what are the reasons? Why do people do it? Um, in the study I uh, rely on a lot by a German government agency, three areas were identified that have influence here. The most important one are work and organization related factors, such as high workload, stress, uh, corporate culture, things like that. Furthermore, there are personal factors such as age or gender and structural or environmental, environmental, uh, environmental factors, such as general job insecurity. I will uh, talk about some of those. For age, gender and relationship status, uh, research has been inconclusive so far. Either there are studies that are contradictory or um, some correlation has been established, but it is not very high. So this is all still rather unclear. One factor where there is a stronger correlation is the health status. If your health condition is worse, you have um, a higher chance of going to work sick. But as I mentioned before, um, a degrading health condition is also a result of going to work sick. So it's not that easy to differentiate here, I guess. One aspect, one factor that clearly um, contributes to presenteeism is uh, individual boundarylessness. So if people have difficulties saying no, this should be rather obvious. Um, such people are more prone to showing up at work sick. In this regard, I would have also been interested in the influence of overcommitment, of being committed to your work um, beyond any degree that can be reasonably expected of you. Um, this uh, is, would also be likely to, to have an influence, but was not discussed in the sources I have found. Another um, aspect that is uh, interesting is um, a sense of duty and loyalty. In surveys, if people are directly asked, why do you go to work sick? This is the most popular response. About 50 to 70 percent of those who go to work sick say they do it out of a sense of duty and out of loyalty to their company. I'm not sure 
how uh, credible these results are. Because obviously it is a very positive answer, one that shows yourself in quite a positive light, uh, an answer where you like to, to um, cross, cross the box. So I find this a bit difficult. Furthermore, if you have to rely on surveys, if you have to rely on honest answers by people, it's obviously difficult to uh, research any, let's say, negative factors, such as a need for recognition, attempts to score some extra points with your boss, things like that. There are probably factors there that also have a strong influence, but there um, I, I didn't find any mention of those in my sources, and it's not surprising because it's difficult to um, yeah, find out something like that using surveys. Furthermore, one aspect uh, I would have been interested in that hasn't been discussed in my sources is um, how the environment reacts to the presentism. For example, whether the superior um, shows a positive reaction, like saying, oh, there is someone who is really committed to his work, or whether he shows a negative reaction and uh, sends the sick person back home, or the way colleagues react to presenteism, the way it is viewed in the corporate culture, if there is acceptance for presenteism, or if it is viewed as something negative. Uh, but I didn't find any mention of such factors in my sources. However, I believe it is uh, very likely there is a strong influence there. One uh, further um, aspect that is interesting is job insecurity. There are some interesting indications here. In the surveys where people are asked directly, why do you go to work sick? Um, job insecurity doesn't rank that highly. About 20 to 25% of participants um, say they go to work sick because of job insecurity. However, if you separately <clears throat> uh, query those things, so if you separately ask people, are you afraid to lose your job? And go, do you go to work even though you are sick? Then there is a strong correlation among the people who are afraid to lose their job, double as many go to work sick uh, as for those who are not afraid to lose their job. In uh, Germany, there is furthermore a correlation between the general rate of unemployment and the tendency for presenteism. So if there is a high rate of unemployment, more people go to work even though they are sick. Um, an interesting factor is uh, the occupation. It depends on the job whether people tend to go to work sick. The tendency for presenteism is especially high, for example, in the educational and healthcare area, uh, in areas where people directly interact with customers, with people they care for. So this seems to increase the tendency for presentism. Then we have um, the factors related to work, related to the organization. Uh, as I mentioned before, those have an especially big influence. And one factor that is especially important is the number of hours people usually work and whether they do a lot of overtime usually and whether there is a big gap between the working hours they would like to have and those they actually have. All of this uh, strongly increases the rate of presenteism. 
and the assumption is that the result for all of this is a high workload. So people who have a very high workload tend to go to work even though they are sick. Probably because they are afraid to, to fall behind even more because they don't have any chance to really get their work done even when they are healthy. And I guess this is a whole area of problems on its own related to bad management, problematic organizations and things like that. And it also makes a difference how organizations deal with sickness in general. Uh, for example, some companies, um, in some companies, you um, there is an interview with the superior if people call in sick too frequently. And if this is based on frequency, uh, so on uh, the number of occurrences of sick leave, rather than on the total duration in sick days, then people are likely to call in sick less often, to go to work even though they are sick. But as we discussed before, in the long run, they will be sick for more total days. So uh, this is a plan that certainly backfired, where you have um, consequences that were not intended and not desirable. What uh, a factor that strongly increases presenteeism is bad leadership. If there is a lack of integrity for uh, leaders, for managers, and if there is an autocratic management style where people like to order their employees around, things like that, um, there is a higher risk of people coming to work sick. The general working atmosphere is also important, but this can go either way. There was one example, one study uh, from an organization where there was a good working atmosphere, a family-like environment where people really cared for their colleagues and they went to work sick because they said, oh, I don't want to let the others down. And there was an example from another organization, from a company where uh, people said, oh, they don't care about us they just care about the product but they went to work because they were afraid of uh, the organization afraid to lose their job afraid to have disadvantages so this can go either way and this is probably also a good example to better understand why it is so difficult to um, get conclusive results conclusive evidence <clears throat> for those different factors that influence the rate of presenteeism. I'm looking forward to seeing uh, few future uh, research in this area, and I'm looking forward to see how this phenomenon will develop in the future. One thing I find interesting is how the COVID pandemic will influence presenteeism. Because currently, during the pandemic, if there is someone in the office who is coughing and sneezing and obviously sick, this is uh, problematic and risky and dangerous on an entirely diff a different level to uh, before the pandemic. So the acceptance for people coming to work sick might decrease and this might cause people not to do it as often in the long run. And furthermore, um, I'm interested to see how the uh, how work in general and the organization of work will change in the future and uh, what developments we will have there <clears throat> and how this will influence presenteeism. In one of the studies I read, uh, they discussed um, situations where there is a modern management style, modern leadership style, where people are managed by objectives rather than uh, direct, um, direct commands. Uh, Peter Drucker's idea, as you might recall, um, where people have more responsibility for their results and have more freedom in their work. 
Um, the results were not that conclusive for me, but there is a risk that this might lead to a higher rate of presenteeism. So I'm looking forward to more research in that regard and I'm interested to see how things will develop. Now, the conclusion for today is obviously, please don't go to work if you are sick. You harm yourself, your colleagues and your company. And if you are in a leadership role, send anyone home who shows up at work sick. Um, you have a responsibility towards your people and you should, act, you should act upon it. I hope you are still well enough to click the like button and maybe subscribe to the channel. I would be quite happy about both. And please let me know in the comments what experiences you have with presenteeism, how it is viewed and handled and experienced in your country maybe. I'm looking forward to your feedback. We will see each other again next week where I present to you the fast food method that will be quite interesting. For today I take my leave. Have a nice day. See you next time.